that we can start and I'll show you how you can find the bad guys or catch the bad guys in a somewhat unusual but highly technological way how that will actually work for very different applications and how we have recently done this project so that we know that it does work there will be a demo there at the demo i will show you exactly how you would code it not all of the code but at least the beginning of the code so that you can see that yes here it is i know how that would work in general and that is the whole purpose the whole purpose is introduce uh, a new way to solve your problems so let us start the two technology components we'll be using are spark and elastic search but that's not the biggest point the biggest point is that uh, you can combine two new technologies in the right way and what that will give you here's what we want to show you uh, i want to show you a typical big data application but then i'll show you how to enhance that with search then the next question will be okay i got my search how can i use the data so i'll show you how would you use the data with spark and that leads up to the machine learning component which we will show later on so the first point is this, Elasticsearch, which you probably heard about, is a search engine. And that is how most people would treat it. They will think that it is a search engine. The story behind it is a bit uh, longer. Here is that story. Originally, Doug Cutting, that guy whom you may know because he also invented Hadoop. So this guy created an open source project called Lucene, and it was a search engine ancient but not uh thanks guys okay but, but that was not a ui based engine it's not google it's a programming tool so here it is at the top a programming tool called lucene that became very popular because it was replacing very very expensive commercial search engines such as inktomi that would cost you ten thousand and that was 20 years ago uh, at this time. But then people realized that they need something better and nicer. So the first better and nicer attempt was solar by this guy on the right, uh, by Unix Sealy. And it, it is a great open source project. But then there appeared a new company, Elasticsearch, right here at the bottom, who wanted to do it right. One of the things that they do is a scalability. If you're using more than one computer then you would like to have what is called a cluster and Elasticsearch solves this problem in a very nice way because those servers look for each other find each other and join into a cluster that's nice that's i would say better than solar which uses a, a, a way to configure both of them in the end use zookeeper so it's not surprising that the result will be uh, technically sound but it's the convenience of administration. Uh, when you look at uh, Elasticsearch a little bit closer, you will see that it does a couple things. First of all, it divides your search index into what they call shards. Here's one, shard one, shard two, shard three. Uh, these all are there because eventually your index will grow. If you index at a million documents, maybe it's one computer but 100 million that is already a cluster and it may not even uh, be able to reside in one particular piece and that piece is called the shard so they will break the cluster into a few multiple uh, uh, shards and place these shards potential in different nodes in addition they want to be fault tolerant so that when a server fails which is always a when not if when that server fails then there is always a replica for example for shard one there is a replica one here on the right and that replica will take care of uh, all the data that was there so that is how most clusters are organized they all have to be fault tolerant they have to replicate the data and that is how elastic search is organized that, that i think is nothing new uh, what is new is that uh, it is very scalable very easy to scale and in addition to giving you a ready to work search solution they also give you a few more components they give you kibana i'll show you the kibana it's a 
nice UI on top of your search. And they give you a few tools to load the data. So this bits and log stash, bits is a very simple, small component and log stash is bigger. And it allows you to bring in hundreds of different sources. Now, in my case, the one I'm talking about, it's a big bank that wants to find fraudsters. So they won't have all that many different data sources. It will all be from their own individual database. And there are many different ways how to do it from the database, but I'll show you the best one. So this is what you start with. Let us say you're looking at logs. And when you look at logs, that's the kind of garbage that you see. At least it looks like garbage from, from afar. It really is not garbage, it's the standard Apache log format, and it would be nice to somehow present it in a better way. So that's what you would really like. You wouldn't want this black stuff that's hard to read, but instead you would like to be able to see it, let's say, uh, as a diagram, maybe as a chart traffic versus bytes, how much traffic is going through your site. You might want to see the response codes. Are people getting the 200, that's a good response code, and most of them are in that example. But some may be getting the file not there. This is 404, the file not there. And that may be because your site is broken in some places, or some may be actually getting some bad code, which is indicative of hacking. So you'd like to have this diagram. These diagrams are called visualizations, and you build them with the UI called Kibana that uh, Elasticsearch as a company wrote and supports. In addition, you can take multiple such visualizations and bring them in into one dashboard. What I'm showing you here is exactly this. That is a few, in this case, five different visualizations that I brought together in, uh, in one dashboard. So let, let's stop for a second and think what are we doing. We want to have a data source. Every application, let's think of old style application, database and a server. So every application would have a data source. Let's call it data store. And what I've shown you first here is that your Elasticsearch can act as a data store, something that maybe you never thought about. In our case, we had about 30 billion records that we needed to store. And I'll show you how you verify that you have enough capacity to do this. But if you use this Elasticsearch as a data store, as opposed to maybe Oracle or maybe even Hadoop, you'll get a couple advantages. The advantage number one is that you can see all of your data. The advantage number two is that you get text search capability, which is very special. No other data source will give you the search capability. So I'll show you how that works, but for now, let's continue. Uh, the Elasticsearch as a company needs to make money. So they have a component called XPAC. XPAC is something that works together with uh, their standard distribution. So you start by uh, getting the standard distribution, installing, using it. But if you also, in addition, install XPAC right into your distribution, you don't need to redo anything, repackage the data. Nothing, you just install it. You get additional components, you get reports, you get more of uh, monitoring. So that's what you can get from Elasticsearch if you want. Once you have your Kibana, and that is uh, that component that I was showing you, you can now do searches in this bar here where it says use Lucene query index. That's where you can do the searches. And the, you can see I'm searching for the word Firefox and I'm finding that the word Firefox everywhere. So that is a powerful search syntax. Uh, most people have the idea of that because they all use Google, and Google gives you pretty much the same syntax as Lucinda, just a few changes. It can be very specific, the query can be very long. You can say include these words, exclude these words, put these words close together, and so on. So you get the full search, and now, if we're going back to our original goal, we want to write an application that will store the data, process the data somehow, and then allow us to hunt after the bad guys. Then you realize that you could do it like in a database looking for unusual transactions, or you could also add text search, and that will be very helpful. 
This what I'm showing you is another chart that you can have if you want. It's a response code by number. So on the right, I show you what response code I'm getting. And on the left, I show you the actual chart. Very good. So dashboards are is visualizations. You just simply select which visualizations you need to add because you have created them early. And that would be your dashboard. And to summarize, before we do the demo, to summarize, uh, we have now a, a data store. Now you can build on top of that. I'll show you one thing that I have built on top of that. And then we'll go back and to see how much progress did we make. What I'm showing you here is an open source application for lawyers. Lawyers uh, are such creatures that like to sue people for gain and for fun. And uh, they form lawsuits and file those lawsuits in the court. After that, the judge says, hey, guys, there has been a lawsuit filed against you. You should realize you've been sued. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send you more information. And what they send you is uh, uh, a request, a request for all of your data that has anything to do with the lawsuit. And the American laws, that's a valid request. Now you have to produce. You have to give them all of the documents. So that is exactly what this application is doing. If you're interested in this, you just go to Freed, the live version is right here. And what it allows you to do is you can search through your cases. So maybe there are a few cases like here and you want to search through the cases and find any incriminating evidence. Like for example, let's say if we look for some of the standards cases like I lied, will there be such a thing that I lied? Yeah, there will be such a thing as I lied and probably a few times. The problem is it's looking for either the word I or the word lied. So that's probably too much. So let's try to look for the word lied. And that's much less, just one. So we can take that word out. And then we see that, yes, yeah, somebody lied somewhere. We should even see where exactly he lied. Let's see. There you are lied about misstatement, you see? So that shows us that uh, on top of our store, and if that store is Elasticsearch, then we have all of the other tools like Kibana. On top of that, we can build useful applications where we can look for specific words. This is much better than what you get with the databases and even with NoSQL databases. So let's go back to our slides and realize one more thing. That's the diagram of how that particular application is uh, constructed. It is ba based on Hadoop <clears throat> because you need some very scalable processing system. We will be back to that very important question of we need a scalable processing system. But for now, we realize that yes, we have this data store. And on top of that data store, we can build our applications.